everybody. Happy Monday to you. Big waves. Good to see you. Yes, yes, yes. So we got two big birthdays this morning. Anthony Moreland, happy birthday, brother. And Cindy Thompson, happy birthday to you, Cindy. That's right. Two birthdays. We get to sing today, stretch our voice, stretch our, uh, our vocal cords this morning. So we hope you guys have an amazing birthday and a great day on this Monday. Um, and the word for today, for your birthday. <laughs> All right. So somebody brought this word to us. Sorry, we, we might have picked it on your birthday. But it, the word was picked first. It's called disappointment. <laughs> the word's disappointment. <laughs> I just now thought of it as I was saying that. So disappointment. Sadness or displeasure called by non-fulfillment of one's hopes or expectations. How many of you are planners? Like you plan out things in your mind. Like I call it the Chevy Chase. You know, and, and any of you ever watched Chevy Chase, like National Lampoon's Vacation, Christmas Vacation? He's constantly like planning out how things look, like families around the pool, they're jumping in, they're all laughing. Could not be more opposite than when it actually everybody gets there, right? You got cats running around, jumping in trees, causing a fire, dogs under the table, like it's it's a disaster. So there's some disappointment. I call it the Chevy Chase moment, you know? And you have you start to have some sadness, you start to have some displeasure, and all because of non-fulfillment of your expectations or my expectations. So disappointment's a negative emotion when your outcome doesn't match up with what you think it should be. And, but where I went this morning is it can be a valuable lesson, okay? Disappointment can be a valuable lesson. And I've had it in every phase and still have it every every week, seems like, like, like this disappointment. Like something happens, things are going good, and bam, there's some disappointment. So I pulled in like, like what kind of lessons can I learn? Disappointment teaches resilience. You know, have you ever been at the point where you're like, why am I even trying to do this? I get seven steps ahead and then take 12 steps back and seven steps ahead, 12 steps back. And you, you have this conversation, but it's teaching us. We're gaining wisdom. We're gaining things maybe not to do the next time. Okay, now sometimes you might be like me and it takes you a couple of times to stumble over it before you go, yeah, probably not a good idea. So it teaches us resilience. It also teaches us patience, which was my word for 2023 that most people didn't like, but patience, it teaches us. It also teaches us the importance to adapting to change. You know, how many of you are like this? This is the way that it's always been. This is the way that it was 12 years ago. But things have changed over the last 12 years. People's gotten older. They Things have changed. That, and, and, and so the importance of adapting to the change that we're now living in is important. And disappointment teaches us that. So a quote I came across, I'm going to turn it to Andrew. It says, one's best success comes after their greatest disappointment. And then if you feel like you've been through some trials and some eras and some tough times, and you're really proud of the resilience of you staying in, staying in the fight, and now you're starting to see some labor, some fruits of your labor. Maybe it's in your health. Maybe it's in your finances. Maybe, it, maybe it's your profession. Um, stay the course. Stay on track. So, what it taught me this morning. So Andrew, I'll turn it to you. Well, great, great lesson this morning. And we always make it positive in the end. So I didn't think about the word when we were looking at birthdays, but I think we got to a positive lesson. And I just think about, you know, sometimes this time of year, we can have these big expectations and sometimes we can be a little disappointed and it might be that we wake up January 1st and we realize maybe we're disappointed with what we achieved the previous year. Or maybe it's, 
you know, different things with family, like the, the Chevy Chase moments, which I am very guilty of. Coach calls me on that quite frequently and I need it. Like I need that getting called out on those quite frequently. But I just think it can be a time of year where we can get a little disappointed by big things, by little things. So how do we overcome that? And the quote that I found was, disappointment is just the chance to start once more. This time, all the more insightfully. And that's Henry Ford. And I bet he got disappointed once or twice in his, you know, inventions and all of that good stuff. So how do we start again more insightfully? How do we get over the disappointment so we can move on and the next day get all excited again? So first of all, acknowledge the emotions. We talked about that before. But when we allow ourselves to feel and recognize the disappointment, we can work through it. Instead of trying to stuff it down or ignore it or push it aside and be like, eh, it didn't really happen or this isn't a valuable feeling or whatever we may tell ourselves, if we just allow ourselves to feel that disappointment, allow ourselves to be upset, allow ourselves to get frustrated, then we can move past it. Next is to reflect on our expectations. So maybe we need to evaluate if our expectations were realistic or not. Maybe we need to adjust our expectations in the future. So maybe I'm disappointed that I didn't run a marathon this year. I'm like, shucks, I've been planning that in my head, but not in my body, right? I've been thinking about it, but I didn't execute it appropriately. And then I didn't do it. Now I'm disappointed in myself. Maybe I need to go back and figure out, okay, what are, are my expectations realistic? Do I need to adjust them or are they realistic, but I need to adjust my behavior to get to them. So figure out sometimes disappointments just come from unrealistic hope. And sometimes they come from, I just didn't plan well, whatever, but we just need to go back and check out our expectations. Next is to learn from the experience. So figure out what you can extract, what lessons that coach talked about. How can we learn from this experience so that we can grow, so that we can discover what's really important to us, what the things that you know can make us sad can show us really where our heart is and what's really important for us. Next is to focus on what you can control. Concentrate on the aspects and whatever you're looking at that you actually had within your own grasp. And this shift can empower us to say, okay, what can I do moving forward to be more positive? Next, we seek some support. So talk to friends, call up your bestie and say, hey, I'm gonna cry for a minute. Will you just sit here with me, right? Find those people in your life that you can turn to in those moments so that you can get a little bit of support and sharing those feelings can help us gain perspective, helps us get that comfort that maybe we're looking for. And sometimes we might even get some solutions in those interactions. Next is to set new goals. So redirect your energy by setting a new goal, an achievable goal. So if I really don't want to be sad that next year I haven't ran a marathon and who said it was overrated? I agree. I agree, um, Tina. But maybe that I really do want that to be a goal. Well, then I need to set that goal again, but with some action items behind it, with some intention behind it. And then lastly, maintain perspective. We got to realize that disappointment's part of life. Oh, we just got Cindy. We got to realize that setbacks are a part of life. Keep a broader perspective and understand that disappointments don't define us. They don't define the holiday or the goal or their business. And they don't define what our future or our success is going to look like. They're just a little moment. So gain some perspective with that. So thank you for this one. <laughs> we made it as positive as we could. And now- yeah, we I thought it was a great job. It was a, it was a great, <laughs> lesson. great lesson. So- all right, so here we go. <clears throat> Anthony Moreland, Cindy. <clears throat> we sit. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. 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 Happy birth